Okay guys, welcome back to the channel. So, delighted to be introducing you to the new JPX 923 models. Chris, this is, uh, this yesterday when we got our first, our hands on the product for the first time, you kind of were, you guys were filming, so we were kind of peeking in the bags, <laughs> right. and what's new, what's going on? And then I noticed what we saw the last couple of years, Hot Metal, Hot Metal Pro, mm -hmm. love it. You know, can see little kind of changes and refinements. And then I noticed the extra model, yeah, the high launch model, right? Which was I wasn't expecting to come down and see that. I was expecting to come down and see four models. So you're right. The hot metal family has expanded to be three: mm -hmm. the pro, the standard, and the high launch. We've talked a lot about it in the channel that distance and in these stronger lofts don't necessarily mean that people are going to hit it lower and, and that type of thing because of CG adjustment right. and and you know the way the golf ball is now and you know we can still maximize you know a nice peak height but we do we do sacrifice in spin that, that's sure. the one element we can't get away from is is that we're we're going to create velocity through ball speed we're going to create you know height through launch and velocity together mm -hmm. and then we're going to create sort of the how that performs in different conditions through spin and we were missing the spin element. Absolutely, and you know, you could always band-aid the spin with the ball, but yep. ultimately that's gonna affect your driver spin, totally. it's gonna affect your short game, yep. it's gonna affect everything. So ultimately, if we can deliver an iron that has the speed attributes of the hot metal, mm -hmm. but a more fittable spin rate for a lot of players, then all of a sudden you don't have to make that sacrifice. You don't have to make that switch that's gonna affect right. other things in your game. And, and you know, CG, I feel like is, is the, the uh, most used buzz term in our, our channel. We, you know, I think you guys understand it, you know, as well as we do at this point. But when these lofts increase, get stronger, and obviously the offset of bringing that center mm -hmm. gravity down and a little further back, the reality is that that just means a little higher launch and a little less spin. You know, always so the, the loft is moving that direction, the CG is moving in that direction to create the deflection in the head to slightly tilt and we, we get that higher launch. So. We had to wrestle it back from the only place we could yeah. on the club, which was the loft. The loft, exactly. You know, the funny thing is when you play with loft, you know, loft from a fitter side, you obviously know it better than anybody. Loft's gonna increase launch, but also is gonna increase spin. Yeah. So ultimately, what can you do with CG manipulation in terms of increasing the loft, but also trying to mitigate the launch angle and get a little bit more spin as well. So how can you play, pull all those different levers so that you have three clubs that fit different players because yeah. ultimately everyone who needs more loft doesn't necessarily need more spin right. or needs more spin doesn't necessarily need more loft so again giving you fitting options mm -hmm. allows you the possibility to dial somebody in properly right. and we've dealt with the naysayers you know dave mentioned a great point earlier on about the point people make about well if if you want it to spin at a seven iron rate why not just use a seven iron? Why, right. <laughs> why use this this kind of strengthened, you know, eight iron or, or whatever it might be? But you know, the, the reality is that the, of the three components that create the, the ball to fly, the speed element, the launch, and the spin element. Well, if you do go to the the lesser iron, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to lose the speed element. Absolutely. And, and the speed is the most dominant of all three in creating the up. The velocity is the part that creates the, the peak. Totally. You're exactly right about that. And that's what's cool about this family is all of the speed elements are consistent across the line. Mm -hmm. Whether you're talking hot metal pro, hot metal, or hot metal high launch, they all use the nickel chromoly material. Yeah. They all use the unitized cup face. They all have the same, even the face geometry, the minimum thicknesses are the same. Mm -hmm. The actual uh, variable face thickness within them is all the same as well. So the speed is there, it's just giving you different windows. Yeah. And, and you beat me to that one, that which I love. We're talking next gen chromoly. Mm -hmm. yeah. We've got this nickel infused chromoly. We've got the, the design or, or sort of the, the, the vision of the JPX line when Cromoly came out, this was the vision to create the mm -hmm. level of speed that you now have, but at this, the, the, the base uh, material content, you couldn't quite achieve the right. face thicknesses in the ball speeds and COR that you are today. And, and the nickel chromoly has allowed you to do that. That's right. We were before, we were using a 4140 chromoly, and we had, we had optimized that material. Right. We had gone as thin as we could go and gotten as hot as we could get with that. So ultimately, as engineers, you're looking for the next stronger mm. material. It's still a version of chromoly, but by infusing that nickel in it, we were actually able to recognize 30%, 35% stronger material, which means you can go way thinner. Like mm -hmm. even to the point where at one point our first prototypes were too 
hot on this. <laughs> and again, you know, that sounds like cheesy marketing. Where it's, oh, it's too hot. We had to dial it's it back. The truth, yeah. But there's but there's rules even on the iron side that right. most people don't really recognize. They don't. You're right. Yeah. Because yeah, but there is a cor limit, and ultimately you got to play within all those rules too. So this allowed us to actually get it right at that limit. So and also allowed us to optimize the face so that you get that speed very consistently yeah. as well. And that's what nickel chromoly really allowed us to do. There is a monster size gap in the industry right now for a fast, forgiven iron that spins. Absolutely. A monster size gap because mm -hmm. everyone has migrated towards distance and stronger lofts and lower CGs and adding a shaft and a ball that will complement that and try and wrestle a little bit of that peak height back and get those land angles back. No one yet has, has done it in, in this fashion where they've, they've, they've maxed out the performance, mm -hmm. then went back to more of a, a kind of a traditional loft. This gives you the look and the performance of the speed generation mm -hmm. of the hot metal, plus the spec that so many people actually need. Totally, and there's companies, there's great companies actually who are offering multiple specs and, and, and irons, you know, you know, Ping are, are one that have done, you know, the, the, the power, the standard and the retro specs, mm -hmm. but from a design characteristics, this has been designed to house all that technology and, and all that performance. So, you know, we had a chance to get some sneak peek views yesterday. Mm -hmm. The spin differences between these are, are quite something and I which, can't wait to, to start testing yeah, this. Yeah, which is huge because it's more than just a spec change. It's yeah. a completely unique design in terms of manipulating the center of gravity as well to generate more spin. It's to give you a little bit more depth on there as well. Right. So you're pulling that CG back, you're getting more spin, doing a lot of things to execute on that. And within the family, in the bag, you could, you could quite literally have one set of these. You could go all pros. <laughs> right. You could maybe combo up pros and hot metals mm -hmm. and combo two. You could even go all three. Totally. So these are so compatible within one another with whatever you need your, your irons to do at that particular club. We love fitting, we love mixing and matching, and I mean, the look of them, you're right, it's almost tough to distinguish which one's in the it bag really from is. behind. Yeah. And that's by design, because we realize that your need from an eight iron might be different than your need from a five iron. Mm -hmm. So if you want to combo it, or if your fitter recommends you combo it, by all means, do it. I love it, I love it. Excellent, okay, let's, uh, let's get hitting them. We're gonna again, Go look at the eight iron. So we're going to look at the scoring clubs because there are design characteristics, especially in the pro, little condensed profile, little tighter shape mm -hmm. uh, to that. And then we'll get into the the longer irons, really where the 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 kind of governor has been taken off from a speed perspective. For sure. This is this is let's let it go at this point. Yeah, I love that. Up. Okay, okay. Visually, again, <clears throat> start there. I can't honestly tell the offset between the forged mm -hmm. and the hot metal pro. I, I, yeah. On the front of it, I can't tell the difference. I can see the difference in the top line, mm -hmm. but I don't notice an a, a offset difference. And that's by design. You know, talking pro, it's funny how the hot metal pro and the forged iron, a lot of people are trying to debate, you know, which, which one is right for me. And we want to set them up so they're very, very similar to dress in terms of offset. Yeah. But one truly is designed for max distance, which is this hot metal. Right. And then the forge is going to dial that distance back just a hair. Got it. A nice, nice sort of neutral start. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it was a slower swing again, just kind of first swing back in. 16 lawns, 7,700 on the spin rate. Yeah. 100 feet in that peak height, a little bit further, little incrementally, bit further. but not, not crazy. Yeah. We're not yet at the, at the, the supercars. You right, know, and, and we always try to dial the, the COR and the ball speed to make it connect to a scoring iron. You know, right. the last thing you want is a super hot seven and yeah. then an eight that's a dud. You know, you got to connect all those dots. So with the eight iron, it, it's a little bit dialed back COR compared to some of the longer, right. which is why you're seeing it just incrementally longer than the forge. Hmm. more of the peak height we yep. were looking at. <clears throat> 126 ball speed, 7,000 spin, 47 on the land, 101 in the peak. That peak is stuck at 100, 100 feet. Very consistent throughout the entire line, which yeah. I love. Yeah, good yeah, strike. That was nice. Yeah. The last couple were better, so. The only thing there is, is ball speed. Launch mm -hmm. and spin have not deviated one single bit from those first couple of shots. Right. It just was, it was the ball speed uh, achieved on them. So that's where the, the, uh, the carry distance nudged up. Peak height jumped to 104. 
not different 48 land is where we've just seen it every single time. And that's what I love is so many so many irons in like this category, that landing angle gets sub 45, you know, in the low yeah. 40s and stuff like that. To see that at 48 with a carry like that is right. phenomenal. Okay, uh, hot metal, going between pro and, and standard, like I felt like I could have been in a JPX forged iron with the last one. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've made the departure over to, to hot metal now. Yeah, it's gotten I can a little see bit bigger. Yeah. Bigger, definitely a bigger uh, kind of face, a bigger footprint when you look down on it. Mm -hmm. Much more of, of the, the what the player's looking for in forgiveness. There's some mass there. Yeah, once you get to this golf club, it's almost about how can we inspire confidence in right, it? So totally. that confidence comes from a little bit bigger face. Again, not a massive offset, no, not a crazy no. thick top line, totally. but it is thicker than a Forge model or something like that from us. It is thicker than the JPX Pro. Yeah. But ultimately, this is just like a, a good, almost anybody could look at this unless you're pretty picky about head specs. Definitely. I mean, Good visually, I, I wanted to say yeah. that's higher. I just wanted to confirm it. Yeah, yep. 110 on the peak there, uh, 177. So getting to some pretty lofty distances. Eight, eight totally. irons <laughs> around 180 is, is not the norm. But we're not doing it through manipulation of, of kind of launch conditions, these are still spinning and launching in really good windows, Chris. Well, and that's what I love. You know, we finally got to see your peak height change from that 100 feet, yeah. which is good. It went a little bit higher, yeah. but the distance is there. So to me, when you're talking about this type of golf club, to get that distance and to still have it come in, 49 degree landing is phenomenal. It really is. Yeah. So again, that's great. Loads of stopping power. Yeah. And it felt, I have to say, when I struck it, I'm like, that felt incredible. Mm -hmm. We talked about it a little bit earlier, but when, when you thin these faces out, it's very easy to lose a little bit of that, yeah. that feel, uh, the, the, the kind of pitch changes a little bit, mm -hmm. and, and it tends to lead into some different feels about it. That was very dull, very dense, just so, it's soft. Yeah, that, there's always that trade-off in general of ball speed goes up, feel goes down. Right. It's almost like what, what players have come to expect. Sure. But with Mizuno, we are so conscious of, this, of the feel. We mm -hmm. gotta dial it in. We brought some of the V chassis design to this, yeah. which is a reinforcement across the top line. This area right here, as well as this area on the toe is really important. And a cool thing actually, is if you look down underneath the top line, you can see some ribs can under see there. The ribs, yeah. And that's really similar to the design you do on a metal wood, right. which again, metal wood, you're talking really ultimate thin, thinned mm. out areas over large spans. We're doing the same thing here, reinforcing it in the right way so that you get a solid feel, but it's still explosive. Yeah, I mean, it's just nice and high. Mm. Definitely more neutral as well uh, with, with with these ones for me. Like, I feel like it's just, I'm not shaping it really off, off center right. at all. Just the, these last two are just very, very straight. Dead straight. And that's where the fitting comes in. Again, you want this to go straight and you don't want it to deviate much from that. Right. You know, if you want one that's easier to turn over, or easier to manipulate, that's not this model. This totally. model is designed for the straight ball flight. Got it. So. The, the one we really spent some time talking about is introduction yeah. to the family. We've got the high launch. Mm -hmm. This is an really exciting cool. one because this is going to speak to so many players. You know, yeah. players who struggle with, whether it could be struggle with speed, but it doesn't necessarily mean head speed. It could also be they struggle with angle of attack and yeah. how they approach the ball. Got it. You know, a lot of people who don't put enough launch and spin on the ball given the, the current lofts of clubs out mm -hmm. there. This is bringing that hot metal technology with a spec that's gonna dial it in for so many people. And, and hating, hating to stereotype, but I feel like we must. You can see a, a family member, good player, plays you know a high level in the game, loves a Mizuno golf club. He now has a club for his dad. Absolutely, you're exactly right That's pretty right cool, isn't that. it? Yeah, totally. I know my dad, I'm gonna put him in a set of these, yeah. so I'm excited about that. <laughs> uh, you know, or, or should we say, or mum yeah. uh, as well. You know, something that, you know, is just launch angle enhancing, spin enhancing, speed retaining, and, and obviously keeping the look of JPX. Yeah, Love for it. sure. All right, let's strike it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> different. Very I love different. it that it doesn't. You don't even have to wait for the ball to no. get its, reach its height. You can tell that was a different window there. Totally different window. Yeah. Into the fifties with yeah. the, the land angle, <laughs> open face there. I'm going to try and hit this one a bit better, but yeah, 
Yeah, straight up. Straight up. Almost 9,000 on the spin, which is crazy. But that, that's a lot of difference in, uh, in spin. It is, and it shows that it's more than just a loft change. Yeah. If you do just a loft change, each degree is gonna be maybe a couple hundred RPM, yeah, if that. Totally. But now that we're changing the actual head geometry, where we placed all the mass, the offset, the sole thickness, mm -hmm. the CG depth, you know, on this one, on a lot of times on the distance irons, you're trying to pull that sweet spot low we weren't doing that here. We were totally. trying to pull that sweet spot up for a reason because that's gonna launch it even higher. Mm -hmm. The loft itself is gonna take care of the launch angle, yeah. but the sweet spot's gonna take care of that spin rate. So again, it's pulling every engineering lever we have to get a golf club that you could really fit for a lot of players. So good to see. Okay, players, players uh, five iron in the Hot Metal Pro. Yeah. Lots of people are gonna be adding these to the bag, aren't they? As, as long iron options. We see this actually working this way into tour players' bags as mm -hmm. well. We've seen a number of them. There's actually a really funny story if you go back and watch. Uh, there's a player who hit into 18 at uh, East Lake who pulled one of these golf clubs That's and right. hit it too That's far. Right. If you've ever seen yeah, that video, it was a great I one. Do. Can't quite name, name the name, yeah. but you're right. The Hot Metal Pro, it's worked its way into a lot of players' bags yeah. just because at the longest end where you're not really connecting to the next iron, mm -hmm. that little extra speed, that little extra carry and distance is a good thing for a lot of players. Totally. Oh. Nice, nice sort of strong flight, yeah. Chris. 211 on the carry, 43 in the dangle of descent, 45 mm -hmm. in the spin, 12 and a half in the launch. And that, that's where I think, you know, we talked about the progression of, of the COR. Mm -hmm. Eight iron was, with the, with the, especially with the pros, was right about where I expect to see right. eight iron. But that was, that was 10 yards further than I expect <laughs> to see five iron. Right. <laughs> right. Which is cool. That one went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was that was better actually. Yeah. That was better struck. I like that. Really Four, good. Nearly 45 on the land angle, right at 5,000 on the spin rate. You know, 98 in the club head speed, but 143 in the efficiency. Yeah. That's driver territory. It really is. And you know, we talked about actual COR measured values. We're talking driver numbers on mm -hmm. this because yeah, to get 143, that's an efficient efficient strike. Okay, back to hot metal. Um, I saw the, I see the exact same transition that I saw in the, the eights. It is, it is definitely different. I can notice it's, it's definitely going to give me a little bit more. There's, there's more help. Yeah, that's for, for sure. sure. And it's, it's all help just in terms of head size. Yeah. The actual specs of the pro and the standard hot yeah. metal are the same. The, the loft lie, everything is the exact same. Right. So this is just a head geometry change. Hmm. Very cool. It just feels like it's yeah. in the air for days. Yeah. Yeah, 45 again on the on the land, uh, sorry, the angle of descent, 110 on the carry. A little uh, slower swing speed, which is fine, but still mm -hmm. at that 143 efficiency. Absolutely. It's nice to see that's 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 base level, that's ground sort of level with these, without having to try and cut one up. You right. know, that's where most players go to. Okay, I'm gonna try and land one soft, I have to cut it up. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do that with these. Exactly. You stand and play your your natural neutral shot and it's still got plenty of stopping power mm -hmm. on it. Whew. Almost identical, but yeah. kicked up a little bit on the, the peak height. Yep. One ten uh, sorry, two ten again on the on the carry. Is neutral as, as I can hit it, almost identical to the last the last one. Yeah, and what I love is you know comparing the five irons between the pro and this one. Mm -hmm. With your ball striking, you could play either of these golf clubs. I, I feel it's like more I could. a look between those two. Totally. Yeah. All right, Chris, the the hybrid replacement. Yeah, exactly. For people who don't like hybrids, what an option this is. You're exactly right about that because you're right. A lot of people even struggle with how do I hit a hybrid? Like, totally. am I hitting it like a wood? Am I hitting it like an iron? Yeah. This is almost hybrid type center of gravity depth mm -hmm. with iron type look at address. Right. So the hot metal high launch, again, bringing all the hot metal technology just to a spec that's slightly larger. I love the subtleties of the, the satin portions for you to pay attention to mm -hmm. and the gloss portions to, <laughs> to rebound the, the color and the environment around it because 
you get the feeling that that's a very thin sole club. Absolutely. When actually you get into it, that the high gloss area is, is, is you know, adds to quite a wide, wide yeah, surface. Yeah, because you're right. The playability of a sole is an important thing. On a club like this, the high launch, where you want the center of gravity deeper, that added width of the sole is going to help get that CG back, help get that ball up. But you don't want it dragging behind no. you. No. So when you look at how we've actually engineered this, there's a bevel across this back edge, and that bevel is actually highlighted yeah. just to show the playable portion of the sole and the part that's really there for for geometry, for 100%. for for manipulation of CG. It reminds me of like a wedge. Yeah. You know, like a, like a like a wedge grind, and that you know you will roll a little bit the trail edge off, mm -hmm. so that if you if you open it and obviously it's not for that but like you say it's not for what it does through the turf but it is for what it adds to the CG location exactly right, right. Oh. I mean I hit it pretty high anyway <laughs> but that's that's in the stratosphere that is 118 feet yeah so that almost 6,000 in spin that's great. That's fantastic. For some, for a five iron to be that high, and again, you don't need that extra spin, but so many players do. Yeah. So that's such a good thing. And it's to me, what's so fascinating about all of this is, you know, you talk about how a set flows and when can you stop handling a certain loft. You hit the eight irons and you could handle any of those, but yeah. then where it gets exposed, you got to the five iron and you all of a sudden see, well, th this set doesn't matter because that's going higher than yeah. the eight iron was. So to be able to control the trajectory throughout the set is such an important thing. And this is something that a lot of players didn't have access to right. before. Yeah, so we can get that coming out on a lower, yep. a lower launch, no doubt about that. So. And it was only the launch. The spin still stayed, right. still stayed up there. That's awesome. That's yeah, it, 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 that went right back to that 100, 100 peak height that everything else was at. So really, really good. Knocked the height down by almost 20%. Yeah. Congrats to Mizuno. Congrats to you for pulling something like this together because this is an engineering feat is, mm -hmm. is really what we're talking about. I mean, the way that you can create sort of differences and nuances and, and performance characteristics where you can start to offer people something really that's not, it's not, you know, available out there. It's not easily available to have these different options, especially within a family where if, if I was blindfolded or we were hitting into, a, if we were indoors at mm -hmm. TXG and we turned the screen off, and, and we we're just hitting these, they, they all feel the same. Yeah, There's which no is, difference for me. Which is huge. And again, it, it goes back to, as you said, an engineering and a data, an, data analytics feat. Yeah. The team at Mizuno, I mean, the engineering squad as well as the fitting team, right. the fitting team played a huge role in this. I mean, I can't put, give them enough credit awesome. in terms of saying, this is what we need. Mm -hmm. And then working hand in hand, that's how you get a line. And again, five models within a JPEX line, three models within a hot metal line sounds scary. Yeah but it's all for purpose. I absolutely love it. And, and just knowing that around the, the, the Mizuno family, around the Mizuno ecosystem, performance and, and, and you know, feedback has been pulled from, from everywhere, mm -hmm. from, from the people in the field, you know, who are, you know, we used to say in the, the tech team, in the trenches, right? right. You're out there <laughs> dealing with the, the golfers. You've got the people in the labs that are testing things on CAD and exploring different ways to take, you know, materials to the next level, that type of thing. You've got yourself who's dealing with people like us and getting mm -hmm. feedback and what For do you sure. think? What's, you know, what's working, what's not? and just rounding all that in together, conceptualizing it, putting it out to manufacture and receiving it back in its final form, you must be pretty proud. Yeah, we're so excited for this line because we, we know how good our technologies are. Mm. Now that if we can deliver that technology to everybody, then we that's when you really start to see the fruits of what you've done. I love it, I yeah. love it. Great job, awesome. Okay, guys, hope you enjoyed that. That's deep, that's a, that is a deep dive. And, you know, we don't try to shortcut these things because if we do, we're going to miss out some of the key elements of what we think about this new lineup is going to ultimately help you. That's what we're here for. So, you know, whether you scrolled through it, whether you looked at the, <laughs> the sort of chapters and, and, you know, where you got your information, that's all good. But, you know, if you truly want to dive into what's special about this new lineup, you're going to want to kind of explore every single club and why the short irons perform the way they do, the long irons perform they do, and why every detail inside these irons is it's in there for a reason. Like we said, there's there's no there's no happy accidents in there. Totally. Love it. Great yep. job. Okay, guys, stay tuned for more soon. We'll see you again then.